Hello students, we are studying evaporation today. But before starting that, let us discuss few observations from our daily life. We put our wet clothes in sunlight and they get dried after some time. The mopped floor get dry within few minutes. All these because of evaporation. So let us explore more. The process in which a liquid changes into its vapor at temperature below its boiling point is called evaporation. Evaporation is an endothermic process. Students, endothermic process means that process in which energy is required. Here we are discussing that energy is required in the form of heat. Thus, during evaporation, liquid absorb heat from the surrounding or from any other body in contact with it. For example, during the drying of cloth in sun, the water in cloth absorb heat from the sunlight. Now students, evaporation versus boiling. We are familiar with both the words evaporation and boiling. Both evaporation and boiling, boiling is also known as vaporization, involves a change of state from liquid to vapor. But both of them are different from each other in certain ways and we will explore that. Evaporation occurs at all temperature but boiling occurs at a fixed temperature. Evaporation is a slow process but boiling is a fast and violent process. Evaporation takes place only on the surface of liquid while boiling takes place over the entire mass of liquid. Evaporation causes cooling, but boiling doesn't cause any type of cooling. So students, these were the difference between evaporation and boiling. Moving ahead, we will notice what are the factors that affects evaporation. There are various factors which affects the rate of evaporation. It means the speed of evaporation, how fastly the evaporation will going to happen. First is temperature. Student, you must remember I told you that during evaporation, the liquid, the water takes heat from the surrounding and get evaporates. If the temperature increases, it directly means that there will be more heat. So, more heat means the particle will have more kinetic energy to go from liquid state to vapor state. That is why temperature have a direct relation with rate of evaporation. If temperature increases, then the evaporation rate will also increase. Now, moving ahead, next is surface area. As evaporation is a surface phenomena, it directly means that more the surface available, more will be the rate of evaporation. Think of an example. Put a bucket of water uh, in your, in your, say, in your room. Now, spill a bucket of water in the floor of your room you will notice that the water you have spilled in the floor that will evaporate earlier than the water kept in the bucket now we can conclude that if the surface area increases the rate of evaporation also increase next is humidity students humidity is the amount of water present in air the air around us cannot hold more than a definite amount of water vapor at a given temperature. So, if amount of water in air is already high, the rate of evaporation decreases. Lastly, wind speed. With the increase in wind speed, particle of water vapor move away from with the wind and decreasing the amount of water vapor in the surrounding. That is why students, this wind speed will increase the rate of evaporation. Now students, we will understand how does evaporation causes cooling. As we have discussed this point when we were differentiating boiling and evaporation. We know that evaporation is endothermic process. It requires heat to undergo. And this heat is provided by the surrounding of liquid. 
when the liquid absorbs heat from the surrounding it makes the surrounding cooler now we will discuss few observations which we have noticed firstly wearing cotton clothes in summer students cotton clothes are preferred in summer because they are good absorber of sweat and later on when this sweat got evaporates it causes a cooling impact Secondly, we see water droplet on the outer surface of a glass containing ice cold water. The reason behind this is when you put a ice cold water containing glass, then the water vapor present in the room which are in contact with the glass get condensed and you see them as a droplet. Have a look on few quantities and their units with their symbol. First is temperature. The SI unit of temperature is Kelvin and its symbol is K. Then length. Length is measured in meter which is its SI unit and symbol is small letter M. Mass. SI unit of mass is kilogram which is, which is written as kg. Then weight. Weight is measured in Newton and its unit is capital N. Next is volume volume is measured in cubic meter which is written as m cube then density density has unit kilogram per cubic meter lastly pressure pressure is measured in pascal which is written as capital p and small a so students you must have understood all this topic if you have any query you can ask